a very very important program which is organized in the in the occasion of uh, on the occasion of the international sme week rather uh, people are saying sme day but we have decided to organize full week on the sme perspective because this is the most important segment for the india's economic growth so today we are discussing on the india sme manufacturing summit and focus will be more on the technology finance exports competitiveness and mostly the how we can support for business growth friends we have we are very fortunate to you know uh, to provide a platform to share the very very important thoughts in the perspective of the government particularly from the technology point what are the initiatives taken by the government for the uh, announcement of the competitiveness of the msme sector uh, we have uh, sri sudhir garg ji joint secretary minister of msme uh, i welcome garg sir on behalf of all sme sector and uh, associations from the all over india at this very very important program we have also uh, madam uh, a uh, manika manika clay uh, executive director of canara bank which is a very important canara bank uh, working for the growth of msme sector particularly providing the financial fuel we have also you know uh, alok kediya ji country head uh, from the uh, business banking uh, instant bank which is you know going to speak about the supply chain finance for msmes we have also the sachin chandranath who is also joining the uh, uh, grow capital limited uh, we have uh, Sri Chandan Agrawal ji, Managing Director, TCI Express Limited. We have a uh, Viren Joshi ji, Chairman, SME Technology Development Council, and who is Executive Chairman and Director of the uh, Sigma Electric Manufacturing Corporation, which is having the uh, most important uh, manufacturing units in India, one in Pune and Jaipur. And we have a very important stalwart from the you know uh, Industry 4.4 Manufacturing Technology, which is the most important speaker today. i want to hear from him and which will be beneficial to the msme sector but you know uh, we will be talking about particularly on sme sector uh, garg sir uh, you know currently we know that because of this pandemic because of the corona we have you know learned many things first of all people understand how to meet on the web on the web how to meet at work shop and second very second important, very important thing, thing now how we how? can how we can utilize the digital platform advanced technology affordable technology patented technology particularly for the enhancement of the productivity and quality this is a major focus from the sme chamber uh, chamber of india point of view that you know we support indian smes particularly for the business growth expansion of the connectivity export promotion advance uh, identify the advanced technology putting efforts for the educating the smes you know by way of you know executive programs providing value addition services particularly for the you know they are now transforming msmes are transforming sme sector especially in the manufacturing segment so friends uh, we will be waiting uh, sri uh, bb swen uh, the secretary of msme uh, and we will be giving a thought uh, for the you know how uh, government has put forward for the enhancement of the capabilities and the capacities for the you know not only to face the problem in a local market for you know to compete in a world market as well as achieve the target but when we talk about any sme when we talk about technology the important fuel of the sme sector is the finance so for the manufacturing industry we have changed agenda some you know, uh, rule and that i would like to now invite because without banks sme will not go and without sme india will not grow this is a theme process we are you know uh, uh, bringing in a process so i would like to invite madam uh, uh, mani meklai to give you your thoughts particularly on uh, the bankers perspective when sme sector is you know uh, approaching any bank any financial institution i'm uh, working with the various bank you know uh, rather uh, coordinating with the iba and uh, uh, reserve bank of india if you look at the last 3 years you know the credit flow towards msme sector it's declined day by day we know that because of the pandemic what you look at the you know 2020 march 2019 march there is a decline a drastic decline for the credit flow so see, since the canara bank is for, you know very uh, uh, front line that particularly for providing support and you know providing in you know, a uh, hand holding for the business growth collateral fee loan trade finance project finance you know working finance and mostly you know uh, how to grow how to take advantage of the financial product the canara bank is teaching because i started my business career with the canara bank 
So I know the Canada banks, you know, issue, but other banks are also putting efforts. But my uh, request to you that uh, give us some some thoughts how SME can empower, how SME can be, you know, given financial fuel for a business group. I welcome, madam. Indeed, uh, you know, Canada Bank is the front runner in uh, MSME advances. If you look at the past two years, especially the Mudra loans, we have been doing extremely well. And uh, this is the, you know, a point where the, actually the MSMEs grow. Uh, with, you know, whatever the expectations of the government were there in the mudra sector, we have done extremely well. I think we are the number one among the mudra loans. And uh, uh, let me, my, I think today I have been given a topic of uh, fueling SMEs for better business growth. That's what has been given to me. So let me put my thoughts and I will give some action points, which I think uh, uh, the chamber and the MSME uh, ministry can take it forward. And we are at the bank level also are talking on various issues. At the outset, I thank the organizers, SME Chamber of India and Federation of India SME Associations for the invitation to address this eminent gathering. Uh, we all know that the present pandemic has thrown new opportunities uh, and uh, for MSMEs to realign themselves and grow further and uh, stronger. In this direction, I would like to have my thoughts on the fueling the SMEs for the better business growth. MSME sector, as uh, all of you have been uh, telling uh, as of now, are the backbone of our economy in recognition of the MSMEs in promoting innovations and uh, creativity achieving sustainable development and generating employment. Every year we celebrate 27th of June as an international MSME day across the world. And I'm sure that, you know, only one day should not be given to MSME. It's every day as we tell that the growth of the country is only in the MSMEs. So we should not dedicate just one day for it, but every day we have to celebrate the MSMEs who are the integral part of our economy. Considering the significance of the business segment that accounts for over 90% of the firms globally, 70% of the total employment generation, and contributing half of the world's GDP, uh, you know, that is why the International MSME Day has been uh, recognized, uh, to give, you know, the impetus to recognize the valuable contribution made by the small businesses towards the sustainable development and a sector crucial for the livelihood of the billions. If you look at India in the 73rd National Sample Survey, there are approximately about 6.34 crores MSMEs. Out of this, 51.25 are in the rural areas and 48.75 are in the semi-urban areas. And if you look at this, you know, further if I can, uh, you know, segment it, 99% are in the micro uh, sector. And the sector has been creating 11.1 .1 crore jobs across the country. And if you look at the 6.34 crores MSME, that means one MSME just contributes only two people per MSME. This is a very small number. The sector contributes about 45% to the manufacturing output and more than 40% of the exports. Now, in our country, if you look at this, MSME sector is an exceedingly heterogeneous sector. And, you know, in terms of the enterprise, the variety of products and services that they're looking at, the kind of technology they are employing. So it's a totally uh, heterogeneous sector. And as, uh, you know, all as the, what do you call, um, people who make decisions, we have to look at the various aspects of the MSME sector before we say that, you know, one quote uh, fits all kind of an attitude. In the present context, the day assumes greater significance that the economy is immensely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, close on the heels of various other disruptions uh, in the economy. MSMEs are the most affected due to series of lockdown measures and the lack of demand in the market. The sector is severely stressed, leading to loss of employment and livelihood for crores of workers and their families. E economic recession, unemployment, reduced income, market demand, are threatening the very survival. In the long run, it's going to be very difficult for the pre -COVID. It is going to be very different for the pre-COVID situation, requiring significant changes and restructuring in the MSME segment. With the government's Atmanirbhar Bharat, Make in India, Skill India, Digital India, Stand Up India, and other various other initiatives, along with the push to attract greater FDI, MSME sector is set for a rapid growth and integration with major global value chains. However, we need to address multifaceted changes 
faced by the MSMEs in order to bring sea changes in the sector from the current level. One of the major problems, if I may say, is a very low registration of MSME as a maximum number of units are in the unorganized sector. Out of total MSMEs, it is understood that only 15% are registered. Registrations, you all know, will help us help the units to avail various benefits of the government from time to time, apart from, you know, the very much needed you know, financial uh, uh, assistance from the banking sector, like the collateral free loan, protection against delayed payment, reduced ROI, and various other facilities can be availed of if this, you know, MSMEs are registered. The government has rolled out simplified registration procedure called the Udyog Aadhaar Memorandum. All of us are aware of it. And our biggest challenge is now to see that the unregistered MSMEs are bought into the mainstream. Another major problem that we as bankers have also uh, saw is a source of credit and access to formal credit. As per the data available, only 10% of the credit requirements of the MSME units is met from institutional finance and the remaining is met from informal and un unorganized sources. As per the estimates uh, uh, you know, that we have read, the appetite for debt financed MSME is around uh, 70 trillion. This makes for a huge vast potential for financing the MSMEs by bank. The documentary requirements, another biggest problem that we also look at in the banking sector is the document requirements, legal formalities and other requirements, other credit assessment processes for availing credit from financial institutions is one of the biggest deterrent why the MSMEs do not approach the banks. In particular, if you look at it is a micro enterprises which do not come for formal credit and they are pushed towards the informal sector for credit. Hence, simplification of documents and other formalities will cover most of the non-banking non MSMEs to come into the formal fold. This will reduce the borrowing costs and also increase their profits, enabling development, reducing disparities and fueling the all-needed economic progress. Another major setback faced by MSME uh, affecting, is, uh, affecting the cash flow is the delayed payment made by their corporate and other bigger buyers. MSME today are dependent on B2B transactions are the, as they are less connected with the end use customers. The dependency on corporate buyers has restricted the bargaining power of MSMEs in terms of pricing and prompt receipt of payments. The government of course has taken many initiatives to ensure timely payment to MSME supplying to PSUs and non-PSU corporates. You know, one such initiative was the TREADS platform and another has been the GEM portal where the government has provided a platform for them, for the MSMEs to, uh, you know, uh, get uh, discounted invoices and bid their arrangement on a, at a competitive rate. Commercial banks are participating in such initiatives which ensures prompt cash flows to the MSMEs. However, the participation of these MSMEs on the trade platform or the you know gym platform is at not at the desired levels more numbers of msmes need to join such initiatives and avail of the benefits another uh, very important uh, issue that i can think of is the resistance of the msmes for technology adoption and digital transformation because of their growth capital they are not able to take such initiatives Cutting edge technologies are evolving faster and requires an equal talent pool and adapt at the latest technology platforms. Nurturing an in-house team is an expensive affair and the biggest roadblock for this sector. What we uh, feel is an outsourcing partner can be a quick rescue and help the MSME stay tuned to the latest frameworks. In this regard, I would like to share some of the action points that we can take up. One is the MSME function is a highly competitive environment and requires an enabling environment to sustain growth. The three main interventions that I feel is required for the enabling environment is a legal and regulatory support, government support, and of course, financial infrastructure support. Conducive business environment like timely access to credit, access to market, technology upgradation, ease of doing business, and sense of security for the employees will facilitate growth of the MSME sector. It's imperative that all the stakeholders here should keep the above facts in mind 
while chalking out the programs and scheme for the MSME sector. Our country is known for localized niches for MSME products called as MSME clusters. Some states have also introduced uh, special schemes to promote MSMEs and create employment opportunities at the ambitious scheme of one district, one product. The financial institutions should take cognizance of this and design and customize the credit of offering, offering suiting to the diverse nature of MSME clusters and businesses. And uh, we understand that there are more than about uh, uh, 3,800 to 4,000 such clusters in India. And Canada Bank has taken a very keen interest in these kind of uh, clusters and has formulated, you know, definite schemes for, you know, very many clusters like this. And uh, adoption of technology, as I was already talking about, formulating alternate lending models will help to increase the efficiency and to reduce the turnaround time for processing the loan proposals. A slew of programs announced in the form of Digital India, Startup India and Smart Cities have started to make you know, a lot of climatic condu climate conducive for financial technologies, especially the fintech models, which is you know strongly emerging in the MSME lending space. Novel concepts in lending has also coming up, like marketplace lending, balance sheet financing, supply chain financing, vendor financing, all will open new avenues of finance and availability of credit to the MSMEs. To, the, to help the MSMEs to come out from the stress resulted from COVID, the government has also announced several measures. All the lending institutions should implement such schemes in true spirit and extend the benefits to the eligible uh, MSMEs. I know government regularly interacts with us and also finds out what is the you know uh, loans that and advances that we have given to the MSMEs, eligible MSMEs. We also need to create, you know, one important thing is the awareness is not there among the MSMEs. We also need to create awareness among all MSMEs regarding various uh, measures initiated by the government. Like where very recently they have said disallowing to, uh, you know, uh, 200 crores, up to 200 crores to enable MSMEs to partic participate in the government procurement process. The launch of uh, Ch uh, Champions Portal, a single window solution for MSME to address their grievances and to capture new opportunities, availability of benefits of various schemes like PMEGP, CGTMSME, credit linkage, uh, capital subsidy, availability of framework for revival and rehabilitation of MSMEs. And in this regard, we at uh, Canada Bank have regularly been having uh, webinars with our own clients. And, and in, in each of my webinars, almost like 3,500 to 5,000 of my customers participate, where we are able to you know, disseminate a lot of information to them. And it is very, very well received by our customers. And other initiatives which I would like to mention, not very, uh, you know, it is e-market linkages. It's very important, you know, uh, which can be a replacement for the trade fairs and exhibitions. This is very important where the customers can our MSMEs can immediately get uh, information. Then there's uh, tax reliefs on online transaction, development of entrepreneur skills and harnessing information technology, technology-driven demand supply chain uh, management, formulating policies to help reduce the digital gap. That is very important for, you know, between the large and the small companies. All such initiatives to be regularly that we need to take for MSMEs. India, you know that uh, it's a gay, great... Uh, uh, country and has got a high resilience and the country will surely come back on the growth trajectory. We are, we are hopeful of this. Uh, the government has envisioned to become a USD 5 trillion economy. And I'm sure as all of us have been, you know, regularly telling and uh, we keep, uh, you know, the mantra that MSME sector, sector is a very important wheel to move our economy towards this global. I'm sure with the timely measures taken by the government and specifically by the banks and whatever suggestions I have pointed out will go a long way in mitigating the difficulties faced by, uh, faced by the MSME sector and revive the fortunes in the big way. Thank you and stay safe and be healthy. Thank you and Namaskar. Thank you very much, Madam. A very, very interesting and very energetic uh, talk you had given, especially for the encouragement of the MSME sector. You are rightly said that because you know uh, 6.33 MSMEs are uh, crore MSMEs are there, and still I think 45 lakhs to 50 lakhs MSMEs are enjoying finance from bank. 
how the your Canada Bank, PSB Bank is working. Similarly, that private bank, like uh, Indusind Bank, like my friend uh, Alok is uh, here. Alok ji, welcome at this platform. Uh, we'll uh, and, and so, so the you grow capital. Uh, Mr. Nath is also here. I welcome Prakash Patel ji. You are also welcome. So the point is, you know, along with the PSB, private bank, investment bankers, and you know, the small banker also putting efforts. But you know, the channelizing the particularly the financial system amongst the MSMEs is a huge challenge. So my suggestion will be, you know, let us focus more on the you know, awareness program, uh, informative program, and handholding program. When MSMEs are in difficulty, banks should support them. When the MSMEs are growing, banks should come out to support more on the financial part. So nevertheless, you know, bank uh, is taking care, keen interest, but somehow the MSME sector are not, uh, you know, uh, rather capable to approach particular bank approach particular requirement so once they will take a proper you know guidance and support from the consultants advisors like a chamber like us you know when they will understand the, how to avail the services even gurk have also bringing new new ideas a new uh, system new incentive schemes or rather you know benefits but most of the msmes are not aware to how to avail so we are a chamber as a chamber, uh, SME chamber of the last 28 years, we are working on that. Rather now we have set up the Federation of Indian MA, uh, SME Association, where I'm bringing all the association together to you know, discuss how we can, we will not shut just only, you know, uh, the claim for any uh, type of uh, issues of the government, but we want to improve the facility to encourage MSME to avail the uh, system. Because most of the uh, facilities available uh, create available, but how to use that? That is the most important challenge amongst the MSM sector. So after finance is the most important technology. So um, I would like to introduce Mr. Chauli, uh, Chandra Mauli ji, for uh, particularly for this program. He is a thought leader in industry 4.4. Uh, he has a knowledge and he has an uh, initiative for that. So uh, Chandra Mauli ji, floor is open for you. In a short time, you can take forward. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Salunke ji, President of SME Chamber. Thank you, Joint Secretary, Mr. Garg Saab, and all other dignitaries to give me this opportunity to share some of my thoughts on this very, very important occasion. I'll just share a couple of slides so that it makes more uh, meaning on this occasion. When it's given to me, I want to focus after listening to the banker. I clearly understood that putting one more burden on the MSME of creating the so-called digital revolution in the manufacturing sector. We have to establish the need for it and we should also ensure that financial issue is taken care. So I want to have a good connectivity with the presentation by Canada Bank uh, lady. And I want to talk to what I told Honorable Finance Minister on behalf of Bangalore Chamber of Industry and Commerce couple of months back, she addressed the entire Bangalore Chamber of Industry and Commerce. I sit here in Bangalore and I suggested and she accepted the idea very easily. But how to implement the idea is called the hub and spoke model. I hope you are all able to see my slide on the hub and spoke model. As uh, Solankes have mentioned, majority of the suppliers do not have exposure directly to the end customer. But they have an exposure to their immediate customer. And, you know, in automobile industry, we call them as OEM company and uh, tier one, tier two, tier three and job shops. The job shops or the micro enterprises are the number of people are below 10 people. And then the tier three and the tier two and the tier one belong to the MSME, the, the ladder, then reaching the OEM. Invariably, OEMs do not fall in the MSC category in terms of both turnover and assets. Now you see when all the satellite centers of the SMEs are revolving and dependent on the OEM. There are two areas. I'm now coming to the subject of the technology and without losing the sight of the financial issue. There are two areas where, or rather three areas, the dependency of the MSME and the OEM is tightly linked to three areas. Ladies and gentlemen, number one is quality. Only with a quality approved supplier, the OEM may be public sector or a private sector entity like a Tata, Toyota, or BHEL, BML, whoever it is, are willing to accept the product from the SME through the chain of supply chain, tier 3, tier 2, tier 1 I mentioned. The second, on-time delivery. There is no escape to reach the delivery requirement today 
because that is every company in especially in automobile industry which constitutes 60% of the gdp of the manufacturing in india automobile industry it is going on the on the platform of just in time deliveries the third is information flow between smes and the oems is extremely important both product flow and information flow data so looking at these three challenges perfect quality zero defect on time delivery and transparent information and therefore today the subject of technology mr solanki sir asked me to talk i could clearly see there is a great linkages between the two major constituents of our manufacturing economy and when they are dependent on each other even the financial flow i told honorable finance minister madam nirmala sitaraman that should be channelized through the oem and allocated to the smes in such a way that the accountability of quality delivery and information is also with the oem as well as with the sme then the payment is on time the productivity link scheme can be implemented properly so on and so forth this innovative idea i hope the chamber of commerce today is noting down and taking it up to the joint secretary at at various levels the second aspect i want to tell you is technology implementation in terms of industry 4.0 i am coming quickly to that point is very very important today industry 4.0 is a very big subject i try to condense the whole subject into one slide because our chamber has given me only 10 minutes to talk and therefore i have to be very very fast and of course the, the, the time bell will ring it has got several technologies in that i don't want to get into the technology discussion industrial internet of things is a backbone of all these technologies whether it is a ola car or zomato swiggy restaurant we are able to use our mobile phones to place the order for the taxi or for the masal dosa but why not do the same concept for manufacturing that is why it was born in europe and america and japan in the year 2004 2005 onwards but it matured even in those countries only in 2012 and in india it is slowly green shoots are coming from 2015 onwards and large enterprises as well as some of the tier 1 tier 2 companies have taken a great initiative in implementing many of these technologies i am not going to read all of them but maybe i can send it across through the chamber and they can circulate to all the members who are participating today the very very important thing ladies and gentlemen is a benefits to the sme number one is safety the, whether the human employee of the uh, sme is safe and healthy not only due to the corona but even otherwise and quality already mentioned productivity cost downtime of machines delivery cycle time and flexibility whether it is a large company like a tata motor or their suppliers there is no escape from looking at all these aspects in the manufacturing system therefore our department of heavy industries have constituted a council called capital good skill council and in that council we are looking at all these aspects how do we take industry 4.0 digital india to the medium micro small and medium enterprises as well the two major problem or business oriented financial structures i don't have to mention about it canara bank lady has talked uh, immensely about it salam ke sahab touched upon it the business oriented financial structures we have to still benchmark many many advanced and developing nations across the world and if that is done i think the smes will grow very fast that is one big problem not only in india but even in other countries i can tell you and the second major problem is a technical capabilities to absorb adopt and adapt the so called industry 4.0 or smart manufacturing digital technologies the two pronged problems the first one there are enough experts today talk about financial aspect but i will also talk about financial aspect in the form of affordable and appropriate smart technologies what i mean by affordable and appropriate smart technologies which i want to touch upon identify the low hanging fruits low hanging fruits means what can give the benefit to the sme immediately within 3 months you can see the benefit there are many many manufacturing issues here mentioned set up time reduction de bottlenecking of capacity reduce the downtime of machines you know in india we still talk about 12% interest cost western world is 2% japan is negative interest cost so the use of the asset 
is extremely important in india both the fixed assets and the current assets collaterals etc are never heard of in other countries so reducing the downtime of machine extremely important for the medium small enterprises reducing line rejections and energy consumption very expensive the power bill for the smes and so on and so forth become the low hanging fruits moving little faster i did a lot of research and found there are four things smes and implementing companies technology companies should keep in mind or we should only look at the essential technologies we should only look at the affordable technologies we should only look at the simple technologies we should look at the only the interoperable technologies the fourth one may be little difficult to understand we will skip that but the other three i want to slightly explain essential technologies which are absolutely necessary and avoid over specification which can be affordable by a large enterprise but not the small, small enterprises number 2 adoptable with the with the company's finances so the cost effective systems there are many illustrations when you given a webinar for 1 and 1/2 hours i can do a master class for sme chamber of commerce and then easy to install easy to maintain and easily operated by the sme operator not the operator of the large enterprise kind of skill in capital goods skill council we are looking at 20 emerging job roles and the skills thereof imagine the amount of skills even a large company has to develop in order to make industry 4.0 and recommended appropriate smart sensors appropriate iot edge devices appropriate small data processing forget about the big data etc appropriate vision based monitoring appropriate flexible automation using cobos i will explain this particular point because it can easily grasp the attention of many of the audience today and appropriate augmented reality for remote monitoring during the corona remote monitoring and remote discussions are very very important even corona remember large enterprises can afford to buy an expensive robo expensive robo along with an expensive machine but a small enterprises look at this lady wearing a sari a kobo is enough a kobo is nothing but a collaborative robo about which we'll talk in the detailed master class a collaborative robo is faster to adopt easy to learn this lady is not even a school pass she can do the programming for the kobo with 7 days of training zero maintenance and flexible installation for any component when the changes happen the job shops and small and medium enterprises every one hour they have to produce different different parts whereas a large enterprises is fortunate to produce one part throughout the year but the smaller enterprises are compelled to produce different different parts on different different times even within a day so flexible installation and redeployment is required i can tell you this is a real life case study in gujarat in a company with only two machines and with only nine people of which this lady is one of them and the second most important technology very fast in an msme is remote maintenance and remote diagnostics today even unorganized sector for the repair of fridges and washing machines in our homes or televisions can use this technology very effectively and make better salary for the msme employees augmented reality it is called augmented reality is catching up very fast in india and you know indians are the world's leader for the uh, uh, what is called the software technologies but you have to connect information technology communication technology and operation technology ict they call it when all the three are connected you get the industry 4.0 and my closing remark today i want to tell you company i am advising in coimbatore they come out with a fantastic package of only 500 rupee per month to introduce industry 4.0 in small micro and medium uh, small enterprise also but they give the best result for monitoring of productivity what we call overall equipment effectiveness and monitoring of the condition of the machines which is called digital maintenance and monitoring the power consumption i mentioned very very important is a low hanging fruit is a energy analytics so these three comes in a box 
no expert required the 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 an msme owner himself can ask his operator open the box connect and run so this kind of revolutions are happening i have a humble request for both such is a startup company matchbyte is a startup company both startup india and msmes require special scheme from the government for implementing and promoting industry 4.0 technologies not general productivity incentive scheme is not going to give the right focus on the emerging technologies but special scheme i hope the authorities are noting down for msmes digital implementation of industry 4.0 such as example what i have shown here in matchbyte and several examples we will cover in a very detailed workshop on that note all for the organizers to give me this opportunity and the email address is available with organizers and anybody can write to me and i can guide them on how to digitally transform and automate our indian msmes through affordable and appropriate automation even after the corona is gone out of this country thank you so much atmanirbhar bharat jai ho thank you thank you thank you very much uh, chandramouli sir it's very interesting and very useful because uh, since the uh, garg sahib is you know putting lot of efforts for the you know, technological development and this will be good for you know to understand um, we as well as you know him also to how we can utilize concept uh, share, shared by you uh, friends we are now on a fifth industrial revolution rather because corona has taught many things so we have changed our system we have changed our activity and uh, similarly we are now facing a, a big, big challenge in a fifth industrial revolution also sir with your today's program we have received very very uh, uh, you know handful support from the uh, fermenta biotech limited canara bank indusind bank jsw steel u grow lic tca uh, tci express bumi world and specially support from the you know various uh, uh, companies those are you know involved in our activities supporting and uh, hand holding to msme sector and most important support from the minister of msme because minister of msme is creating level playing field which is a uh, useful for the msme to grow more develop more expand level and more go to international market for a uh, tapping and exploring new market so government of india and particularly minister of msme is playing very very important role from the the day one when the pandemic started uh, mr garg also you and ak sharma was there now the mr bv uh, mr bv sen has taken a charge so this is a you know the uh, ministry which is a parent ministry of our SME, msme sector sir but currently many smes are facing problem raw material uh, you know price is very high and so now lot of issues are there even we have ashutosh kumar from the jsw also uh, on this platform he is going to listen and he is he is going to take a note about why the raw material charges are increasing how the ecd is impacting to the msme sector but there are plenty of things in order about financial fuel manpower uh, ease of doing business importance for the msme sector or creating system that are the many many issues are there so i will uh, will discuss during the secretary uh, mr uh, swani will be there that time but we would like to hear uh, sri garsa from you that you know what is the uh, uh, efforts taken by the ministry for industrial automation and, and especially for benefit of msme and manufacturing industry garsa welcome to you good evening and namaskar to all my friends it's a real pleasure to be part of this group discussing a very pertinent topic and, and i must congratulate team of india sme manufacturing summit to arrange the summit i find that uh, this team is always in the forefront of doing things in a different sphere in new areas so that the industry and particularly the msmes are benefited in a in a different way and for the from the from the futuristic point of view well friends we know that this is the era of disruptions covid has created one disruption but we know that we are living in an era of disruption and we in india has a very young intellectual intelligent 
workforce manpower available with us. This is a very, very vibrant uh, team which is available in the country. And with this team, we can certainly rise to the top as far as manufacturing is concerned. It is our time. It is our turn. We must take this opportunity. And on the ladder of manufacturing, we must become number one in the coming days. Now, when we want to be manufacturing leader, automatic question is that what we really require. So the first thing which I feel which is required is to be watchful. What is likely to happen? What is happening around us? And where are the opportunities? and how to capture the opportunities. This pandemic has shown us that how digitization can help us in many areas. Earlier, we were taking the benefit of smart mobile, but now this smart initiative that we are seeing across around us, we have to now learn from that. And in the short duration of one year, a lot of people have transformed them, themselves. Recently, I was talking to a friend of mine, asking him how the business go, is going on. He said that all those people who have transformed or shifted towards digital era are doing very well. They have no dearth of orders, but those people who have not changed or who are not ready to change they are facing a lot of difficulties. So this is one very clear uh, mandate, which we all have to accept that we have to change, change for digitization. Now it looks to be a very, uh, you know, big thing that how do we do it? Uh, Mr. Chandram was talking about the industry 4.0 and when we, peep, when we talk to people, they find it very difficult to understand all those complex issues. So I just want to demystify the whole game. In the ministry, we are running a scheme called Sfurti. Under this scheme, we provide support to the traditional artisans through creation of clusters. Till now, we have supported around 420, uh, 525 clusters across the country in various traditional areas like honey manufacturing, bamboo uh, craft, bam bamboo uh, furniture, and various, you know, handicraft, handlooms, things like that. So we decided that in all these clusters, we are going to introduce 100% digitization, end-to-end -end digitization. So what I mean to say that, let's say we created a cluster of, you know, create uh, extracting curcumin from, uh, from Haldi. Now, this cluster is going to receive some Haldi as input material. And when this material is received at the input point, then only a spectrography will be there to check how much curcumin is there in this haldi. And based on that only the person who brings this material he will be getting the payments. Then similarly when the manufacturing starts, the machine which will be, you know, doing all those activities, various activities, all those machines are connecting, connected to each uh, one to another. And by the end of the day, the people who are managing the cluster, they will know that how much material they received, how much they grant, how much they manufactured from which machine, everything will be available on their mobiles. In addition, all those people who are the beneficiaries in this cluster, towards the end of the day or end of the month, based on the method of their disbursement of payments, each person will know what is the profit of the cluster? How much is his or her share? And they will get this amount through their bank credit and they will get the masses also. 
we in the ministry will also get uh, through an app, we can see that how this cluster is performing, what is the turnover, what is the profit achieved, how this has been distributed among the people. So this is the way to create a transparent method from the manufacturer point of view, from the leaders or from the company owners point of view, this kind of activities reduces the whole tension of the person and he or she is able to, you know, take out time to do things in a different manner and devote time in arranging cheaper finance, devote time for finding out new markets and market connects. So that is how the person who is in the MSME particularly it is more pertinent because it is sometime a family driven, a sometime a small group driven industry. So these people who are driving this industry will be able to find time to really concentrate in the areas where they should be doing it. Now to become globally competitive, to become the part of the global supply chain, the biggest challenge is that we are able to maintain quality and cost. Cost is the biggest factor. It is coming down every day in passing. So we have to continuously keep on improving our processes, adopt lean manufacturing, which has a potential to reduce your cost minimum by 50%. And along with the lean, if we adopt digitization, this is going to increase my manpower output. This is going to increase my uh, increase my efficiency of the finance in the raw material. So today, if I think that my raw material should be available for three weeks, then by digitization, I can reduce that to two weeks, maybe one week for some items, two weeks for some items, and for very, very critical items, three weeks. So in that case, I reduce my total investment in the inventory. Similarly, I'm able to see my output on daily basis and then see if which material is lying, which ready-made material is available with me, where I can increase my discount to, say, to improve my sales. So reduction of the cost is a key factor and that is what digitization can make it possible. Now, what is happening? Government of India is having a lot of initiative and this ministry along with uh, Department of Science and Technology is working on various initiatives for increasing digitization. DST is having various schemes where they provide 100% assistance for digitization. We, along with them, are working for with our tool rooms, with our clusters uh, to create such solutions. And I'm pretty sure that uh, these solutions are very cheap. In, in 40 clusters, we are able to create solutions for cost as low as only rupees 5 lakhs. That's all. Obviously, for a high-end solution, end-to-end, that is costing around 25 to 30 lakh rupees uh, with all the sensors and software and things like that. So we have partnered with DST to create a complete digitization environment, facilitation environment in our tool rooms, in our clusters. So this is one initiative that we're taking. Now, second thing we are working that we are realizing that with every passing day, our uh, smaller cities, uh, our, uh, you know, our small towns and rural areas are are improving with the infrastructure side. As Honorable Prime Minister has declared recently that all our uh, villages will be 100% digitized in next three years. So the thought which I am pushing right now is that we have seen that in the era of COVID, a lot of labor has to go back or a lot of workforce has to go back to their places and our industry suffers because of that. So now is the time for the industry to think differently and use the power of digital era to shift their industries in the rural sector where the cheaper workforce is available, where the cheaper land is available, now improving power availability and with the power of solar you can have uh, power all the 24 by 7 is not a big issue. The electricity with solar and battery is available in the range of around 6 rupees, which makes it possible to get 24 by 7 power everywhere in the country. 
so this is the era of you know distributed living the mass manufacturing is now changing towards individualistic type of manufacturing now this has to be utilized and this is all possible when we adopt the digital work of manufacturing using 3d printing using designs large number of designs we can't now make up on only few types of design we have to tie up with various uh, design institutes all my manufacturing uh, bodies i will request please have tie ups with various manufacturer various design institutes various such institutes which can provide you large number of designs and create large number of designs in the digital form offer to your customers and uh, and then you can create low cost solutions in a very effective manner this is what today's customer wants so i was talking about this concept also that we have to think of shifting our places from the from the you know uh, large manufacturing hubs to smaller towns from the costlier uh, city nearby areas to to the smaller hinterland so that we can bring down our cost and then we become more and more competitive uh i was just thinking that like the 20th century has made it possible for everybody to fly what is that which is going to happen in the 21st century the first thing which comes to my mind is that that uh, robotics is going to happen everywhere i want to share with my personal experience in this period of covid we decided to to uh, me and my family member decided to do complete domestic work on our own without any external help so we were able to buy a washing machine that is fine everybody is having we bought a dishwasher yeah that's also a lot of people buying but the biggest challenge was cleaning the home so for that we bought the robot as well and i can tell you that this robot is able to clean my home and also do the pocha as well so this is what is going to happen everywhere so whether it is a domestic world or the manufacturing world so robotics is going to happen everywhere and another 5 to 10 years the cost of robots will become so cheap that everybody will be able to afford it so this is the area we have to enter into it so automation is the clear area that we have to enter we can't avoid we can't say that you know this is that this is that we can't put any any kind of any logics behind that we have to go for automation and i can tell you that if the automation happens automatically our cost comes down and the cost come down we get more business more business become the number one in the world for manufacturing so this is the way this is how we have to move ministry is setting up large number of technology centers across the country 6000 crore is the uh, plan a uh, method may be ppp may maybe some investment by the government of india so various methods we are go going to use already around 15 centers at a cost of 3000 crore have already been set up they are functioning so we are trying to create a technological infrastructure across the country so that people industry from anywhere can just visit them and ask for solution and the solutions Uh, should be available to them so with that uh, i would just like to conclude my talk and i just want, i am again thankful to uh, my uh, india sme for giving me this opportunity in connecting to all these people and i i call for all of you to join hands to make india the number one in the manufacturing and take global level thank you very much thank you sir thank you very much it's very indeed uh, very uh, you know uh, happy to hear that you know you had given the encouragement speech for particularly for sme perspective robotics robotizing the sme sector for particularly enhancement of the manufacturing as well as the uh, productivity uh, since we are talking technology the another very interesting point you know finance again we have to in introduce the finance because the private bank is play a very important role and therefore you know i would like to invite the uh, alok kediaji country head business banking from the indian bank to say 
that what transformation and what initiative we have taken in a supply chain finance for a particular for SME sector, which will be beneficial, how they can add, take advantage and how they can go ahead. Similarly, we can you know uh, discuss about how this is a you know uh, uh, gap is increasing uh, because of the uh, MSME sector are not understanding how to avail the trade finance. So you can share your thoughts. Hello, Ji. Thank you, Chandrakanji, and uh, uh, good afternoon to all my co-panelists and. Uh, Thank you to the SME Chamber of uh, India for inviting uh, us to share our thoughts uh, on, on, on MSME financing. I just like to make a very small presentation, sticking to my my allotted time only. Uh, I'll just share. So uh, I, I see everybody is aware that uh, MSMEs and SMEs uh, of our country is is uh, is facing uh, let's say finance crunch. I mean it has been facing uh, always facing this kind of uh, finance crunch for various reasons. I mean rightly or wrongly banks are not let's say willing to willing to extend uh, the kind of uh, uh, requirement uh, which is there uh, for the SMEs. so what we have done uh, is basically uh, come out with a with a with a with a tool as we call it or a product uh, which which basically helps us to uh, uh, i mean uh, finance the msmes much more easily i mean taking care of our our concerns which we have again as i said rightly or wrongly banks are not able to finance uh, uh, the the smes as per their requirement so what what this product actually does is basically take a little bit of uh, uh, care of those concerns and at the same time uh, reach out to the msmes for, for their funding requirements so we we, we call it as a supply chain finance it has been let's say uh, 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 gathering pace over the last few years especially with the advent of uh, uh, fintechs uh, in, in, in the in the country but still i mean uh, uh, it, it is not yet caught up uh, I, will, I will come to that uh, in my in my uh, presentation subsequent so we will we'll quickly go through as to what is supply chain finance so uh, see, primarily while 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 uh, there, there are many forms of uh, supply chain finance there are structured forms of supply chain finance but but uh, a plain vanilla there are two types of uh, supply chain finance one is dealer finance and what is dealer finance it's a short term loan or, or the purchase uh, uh, basically purchase invoice financing which is given to the dealers of the uh, sort of, let's say some of the corporates okay basis basis certain comforts given by those corporates so what, what those comforts are basically uh, uh, that in case of default in case of default uh, the, the the corporate will terminate the dealership and uh, uh, they, they will stop supplying uh, uh, the the uh, the goods to the dealer so how this works is basically uh, because see, what we find that any dealer let's say suppose the dealer is a uh, is a dealer abc enterprises of, of maruti maruti okay now that dealer is more or less let's say dependent on maruti for for his let's say day to day uh, his, his only source of income is 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 that maruti dealership so that the comfort that banks take here is that in case in case uh, the the maruti terminates uh, the dealership uh, of that guy okay so his 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 own income will 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 get uh, completely stopped so that's the that's the mitigant that uh, banks use uh, to 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 fund those dealers for buying goods from maruti under under so again these are these are uh, these are all unsecured uh, uh, lendings which is done uh, which is done uh, and uh, it comes at a very fine pricing and, and of course the, the whole process is so very simple so so the, the ultimately the end result is that the SME uh, in this case uh, the, the dealer gets the finance very very easily and at very good terms similarly there are SMEs uh, SMEs and MSMEs who are supplying goods to the uh, to the larger corporate okay. now they also need the, the similar funding so what what the supply chain finance does is uh, the, the the bank uh, finances those those supplies to the the larger corporate so let's say abc enterprises same uh, this guy supplies to a larger corporate let's say maruti only okay now uh, in the normal course of uh, things uh, maruti will probably make the payment after 90 days or maybe 120 days now th this guy does not have the wherewithal to let's say uh, uh, or does not have that kind of uh, working capital finance okay so what what bank does is bank basis that accepted invoices uh, from the maruti bank in uh, funds to the to the suppliers on day one itself again and uh, again this comes at uh, i mean very very fine terms including unsecure so primarily as i said that uh, supply chain finance consists of dealer finance and supply chain uh, and supplier finance we will move to the next uh, slide
so as we are aware i mean uh, uh, as i mentioned earlier also in my thing that uh, msmes uh, unfortunately face uh, the 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 funding crunch because of uh, uh, because of the uh, issues which are well known to us uh, and and uh, uh, by some est estimates that this is credit gap in our country as far as msmes are concerned is is to the tune of 300 billion uh, us dollars which is which is absolutely huge and very very significant and uh, and the and, and and what we have found out uh, that um, i mean the most of these smes and msmes are 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 basically dealing with or let's say uh, supplying to the larger corporates who are in a obviously better position to 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 dictate terms and 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 uh, which which results in higher working capital requirement uh, for the msmes and we all know i mean because of uh, let's say uh, adequate uh, inadequate uh, um, collaterals and they not having uh, the the requisite financials our our msmes don't get the uh, required funding for that so and that is where actually this uh, the supply chain finance comes in it actually takes care of those two those two two main points okay. that uh, i mean uh, generally i mean uh, uh, it, uh, the banks do not look at the financial strength of the of the of the dealer or the supplier they don't ask for any collateral the, the whole process is very very fast now you may ask i mean then 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 uh, how how do i mean uh, banks mitigate uh, their risk okay so here in dealer finance of course that uh, they, they they take take the undertaking from the uh, corporate that uh, they will terminate uh, the dealer dealer in case the dealer does not pay the bank's loan so which acts as a deterrent okay and and that is the comfort that banks take in supplier finance uh, the, the larger corporates uh, gives the undertaking that uh, on 90th day or 120th day they will make the payment directly to the uh, into the bank so that's the comfort uh, which is taken by the uh, banks and this is which uh the, the the funding is done to the uh msmes yeah. so we will come quickly come to the benefits of uh, uh, dealer finance first of course as i said uh, uh, it's absolutely uh, uh, unsecured very simple documentation very fast process very uh, finer pricing fine. so when i say finer pricing i mean let's say uh, if the dealer or the supplier were to go to a uh, or let's say arrange uh, uh, financing from their own sources they will typically go to a uh, uh, i mean do some private financing or to the friends or relatives where where they may end up uh, uh, paying 15 to 20% uh, in, uh, interest rates and and that is where actually this this comes as a very big benefit uh, for them so uh, in supply chain finance banks are i mean uh, depending upon the profile of the corporate as well as the uh, the, the the supplier and dealer anything let's say around 20, 10 to 15% so it comes at a cheaper rate than uh, what they would good get uh, normally it it also helps uh, uh, to the anchor i mean they they, they get the funds uh, on day one the, the, the day they supply they get the funds from the from the bank okay which which actually helps them to increase their sales and of course uh, the corporates do not have any any obligation uh, there is no recourse on the corporate uh, uh, for, for the for the, for the uh, loan taken by the dealer, so it's completely a recourse on the dealer only, uh, and and the risk is entirely on the on the on the on the dealer as far as the bank is concerned, and they only take the comfort uh, of, of 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 supply. Similarly, as far as the uh, the the, the uh, <clears throat> supplier finance uh, benefits are concerned, of course, I mean unsecured, lower financing, and easy availability is concerned. Uh, if the supplier also gets the fund uh, on on day one itself the day uh, the supplier supplies and and in raises the invoices the invoice is accepted by the the corporate it comes to the bank and on that basis the the, the funding is done to the supplier on day one itself so instead of waiting for 90 20 120 days the, the supplier gets the fund on on day one itself for the for the corporate of course i mean uh, if if their suppliers are happy well well funded they, they are assured of their their raw material supplies I mean, uh, reliable uh, supplies of their own material. Again, it helps uh, increasing the business on on both the ends, and of course, uh, in a way, in a way, uh, it it also acts as a some kind of um, off balance sheet funding for for the corporate as well. I mean, without without having any recourse. It, yeah. In fact, uh, as a bank, we are doing a lot of uh, other structured uh, uh, supply chain finance, wherein this off balance sheet funding becomes even even more prominent and and, and significant. challenges yeah so this is where actually uh, 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 i mean all all the concerned all all, all this let's say all the stakeholders uh, should should work towards uh, i mean making this uh, supply chain finance very very popular and uh, while 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 lately as i mentioned earlier also fintechs have come in and uh, 
they are doing a great job in 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 reaching out to such such let's say dealers and 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 suppliers and making uh, the 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 uh, finance available through their tie ups with the banks also but what we have found that i mean still still uh, there a lot of uh, i mean uh, the required awareness on the part of banks corporates and msmes are not there so all the three constituents banks corporate and msmes many of them are still not aware i mean uh, about 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 uh, how this product works whether this product is there or not and what are the advantages for for everyone actually uh, concerned in, in this this whole whole product so we need to actually propagate uh, again uh, uh, government has done its bits also they have they have, they have come out with uh, the trade platform but again a uh, um, uh, lot of work still needs to be done given especially given that, uh, i mean the, the kind of credit gap as i mentioned 300, 300 billion billion dollars which is there there's another reason actually that uh, many people uh, uh, let's say stakeholders don't understand i mean they they, they feel that it's it's an unsecured exposure so it must be very risky i mean Uh, without actually getting or let it uh, into the details or trying to understand the underlying i mean many people are just 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 not uh, uh, ready to go and 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 do supply chain financing uh, which which actually uh, uh, is one of the major reasons i mean and, and, and as i said i mean uh, and in fact in in, in our experience uh, i've been i've been handling supply chain finance actually for more than 15 years now and uh, uh, and i have handled many other other business verticals within within the bank also but uh, what i found that this this segment has the minimum or let's say lowest uh, npa npa levels uh, in, in the entire entire uh, so so clearly i mean risk are very very limited here and and, and returns are also actually commensurate lack of reach again see uh, many of the suppliers and dealers are let's say based not in let's say in tier 1 or you know, let's say metro towns or even tier 2 towns many are based i mean let's say tier 3 towns or even even smaller towns now banks of course uh, are not able to reach out to, to that level especially the uh, private banks that also is one of the factors you know, why why you know, this, the, the penetration is also low of course now uh, uh, rbi has allowed the co lending hopefully that will that will help uh, let's say banks also to reach out to the, the far off locations in conjunction with the uh, smaller nbfc other reason actually i would like to in fact emphasize over here in fact uh, madam uh, uh, ed from canara bank also mentioned that uh, uh, the the, the uh, many of these traders of course not, not many in fact traders traders have been disqualified from msme qualification because of which actually They, they they tend to miss out from uh, many other benefits which which come under msme and, and also uh, the banks are not able to qualify or classify them and under psl so that also acts as some kind of deterrent and lastly again this was also uh, mentioned by one of the earlier panelists that uh, the, the urc process should be smoothened that is specifically for the smaller msmes almost 85% of our msmes are not registered with msmes because of various reasons i mean they are so small they are not very aware not very tech savvy not very document savvy so as to go and apply and and, and get the msme registration i think uh, if these four or five things are 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 let's say you know, taken care of uh, supply chain finance can actually go a very very uh, long way in solving i mean a large portion of our our msme's funding problem on last slide uh, i just wanted to update on what what we are doing so uh, as uh, as far as supply chain finance is concerned of course indusind bank is one of the largest supply chain finance banks in india uh, we 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 have been and it's one of the actually focus areas within the bank it's a separate vertical run by a separate team separate business head that's the kind of focus and it's very very well run in the sense that i mean we have had very good experience in terms of portfolio quality and i mean we we, we are catering to almost i mean we are sector even though we are sector agnostic our major exposure lies in automobile industry steel electronics and fmcg in fact uh, uh there the, the the triple asset award which is given by uh, hong kong based very famous uh, reputed uh, global entity okay so we were we, we were awarded the best dealer finance bank in asia actually um, by tri the triple asset twice in last three years we have got a very highly experienced team of supply chain finance normally uh, i mean uh, again as not many banks are doing it in a very focused manner you will not find many bankers also uh, who have have the let's say requisite knowledge about uh, supply chain finance but we we have, we have created as i said a specialized team consisting of very experienced team <coughs> experienced members of supply chain and of course as i again mentioned uh, we are doing 
many more sec, uh, many more structures apart from uh, this uh, uh, simple dealer financing and and uh, supplier financing. With this, I will end my my presentation, and uh, I thank you uh, again, uh, SME Chamber of uh, India, for giving us opportunity to share our 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 thoughts on this. Thank you, Alokji. Thank you very much for giving very good insight. Particularly, uh, trade finance is a big you know harder for MSME sector when they approach. But we have to you know create the awareness. We have to provide handholding to utilize and you know take the advantages of the your. Uh, services. So, meanwhile, we are waiting for the uh, secretary sir, uh, Mr. Bibisen. So, what we can do, uh, we can you know bring in Virenji and uh, Prakash Patel, and we can have uh, even Chandramouli ji. You can also on your video. We can have a one question answer uh, round with the uh, Garg sir because I want to take advantage since the Garg sir is here and we just on a knowledgeable person from the technology point of view. So, Virenji, floor is for you for uh, any question and. Uh, for uh, Garksab. Garksab, good afternoon. As always, a pleasure to be interacting with you. And uh, I, I'm just going to continue the dialogue which I had with you a couple of months ago when I was in the US. Yeah. And mm -hmm. for the benefit, for the benefit of all the audience today and all the distinguished speakers, uh, what I'm looking for is how do we connect between the government and your robust activities on digitalization. And how do we rope in industry, the large companies and the SMEs and create a partnership and a cluster, the successful cluster that you mentioned and you had talked to me about it several months ago. And again, what you articulated today, how do we create that in the manufacturing space? That's the, that's the way we can make a success of industry. As you heard from everyone and you know very well yourself, the MSME sector needs a lot of support. I believe that support will come and is part of what I was going to talk about, but I think I can mention it here is by being going global and being cost competitive. Many of the things that you mentioned, how can we, we need to, I know industry and the Federation have to do a lot of work, but I think at times the way the government has created a successful make in India and Atma Nirbhar program and created a platform, which then Indian industry can follow. If you and the ministry and the government can help us create that platform, then industry can take off and do its work very well, the large and the SMEs. But we need a platform of digitalization, lean manufacturing, cost competitiveness. We need some support uh, in, a, in the form of a platform, no, not so much as finances, more yeah. as a platform to help us. So, uh, thank you. I think it's a very, very pertinent point. So globally, we have seen that when the industry and the educational institutes, if they connect, then they are able to create quickly low cost solutions. We did an experiment in Maharashtra where 20 engineering colleges uh, joined hands with uh, chambers of commerce and took around 500 problems of the industry. In the initial time, initial thought was the, of the industry was that uh, what these young boys will be able to do. But soon they realized that uh, the power of young talent, uh, what it can do. And you'll be happy to know that uh, with the industry support, we have now expanded this program across complete Maharashtra and also in Punjab. In the same line, now we are working to set up large number of centers of excellence across the country. We have started one with the IIT uh, Chennai, which is uh, mainly on the choir sector. And they're also creating and working on the 3D printer for the choir sector. So we are also now working with KVIC and uh, with various IIMs and IITs to create another 20 centers of excellence where the industry and institutes will connect and will create low cost solutions, they will take up the problems of the industry, call for the problems, create solutions in a cost effective manner. We will provide funding for experimenting all those solutions, implementing these solutions. Once they're implemented, proved, then we'll showcase it to industry and then industry can buy it. So this is the model as now, as of now we are working on that. So I would just like to add that I compliment you. I know about this. You had mentioned it. And I think it's a it's the right path to follow. And I would just, uh, from my side, just 
as motivation encourage you if you can make sure you rope in industry as i heard you mention get more of us roped in so that along with the federation with the sme chamber yeah. with various manufacturers we can all work closely together in these centers of excellence i think exactly what mr chandra mawali and all the other speakers spoke about and what i'm trying to say i think we could create a very vibrant partnership and and yeah. work towards the digitalization that you talked about i invite this chamber to uh, i think you are bombay based so yeah. we are working with the bombay iit for creating a center of excellence for uh, particular sector we already have a tie up with them so i invite you to join hands with us for this uh, sure. center of excellence in in, uh, in mumbai area sure so we have a sme technology uh, development council and through that we are putting lot of efforts for the you know connecting bringing the you know, stalwarts together and yeah. major my role is you know to improve the capabilities of msme sector those are involved in the manufacturing industry how to develop how to improve their cap, uh, product the product should be you know at national international level other yesterday i attended the commerce ministers meeting that they are putting efforts for the branding branding made in product in india so mm -hmm. uh, our uh, secretary sahab has also joined so uh, okay. so bb sen sahab uh, welcome at this very very yeah. important program Thank which you, is you know uh, we have organized on the, on the occasion of international sme week other sme day instead of that we have celebrating sme week we have uh, you know putting efforts for the bringing stalwarts from the finance uh, technology exports uh, uh, competitiveness you know particularly for the you know giving the hand holding knowledge and support sir we are aware that you know sme sector are facing a lot problem for last you know particularly in last one and a half year uh, mostly with 15 months we can say Uh, for uh, you know, not starting a proper business, not in a revival mode, or not in survival mode, but somehow, you know, Minister of MSME, Minister of Finance, RBI, or banking sector, and particularly technology providers, digital technology providers, are putting efforts to bring us on the right track. We are working very closely with the ministry, and particularly we want to support MSMEs. You know how to use the Uh, current facilities are made available by the ministry what are the uh, schemes are available what are the incentives are available what are the financial product made available by the banks private banks or, uh, or small banks most importantly currently we are facing the financial fear raw material availability scale and power an emerging market so therefore you know chamber uh, sme chamber of india is working very closely with uh, all the stakeholders federation is bringing all the stakeholders and particularly the policy makers together to share their thoughts currently we are aware that in you know, uh, many uh, uh, raw material prices like you know polymers uh, ceramics composites and metals are increasing day by day because of the uh, non availability of the raw material not easily available in msme sector have to you know buy from the particularly cash purchase uh, rather uh, today morning i was talking with the director of finance from the SCS, uh, nsic that they are providing uh, 180 days credit for the companies those are providing the bank uh, guarantee for a uh, particular the, i would like to suggest even i am going to share with you or submit you our proposal that how the nsic can put efforts for providing the raw material uh, uh, raw material easily at the low cost uh, against the 180 days credit with a minimum uh, rate of interest and not you know getting a bank guarantee or non funding on funding from the others uh, by giving the ratings from about 5 crore to 250 crore turnover companies those are buying large quantity raw materials particularly metals ceramics composites or uh, uh, polymers where we can support them for a, uh, entitlement or empowerment for a particularly to produce the quality product in time we know that in a large corporate are not paying on time even though uh, we have created trust platform even i am pursuing the ministry of commerce and your ministry that you know 100 crores turnover not 200 but 100 crores turnover companies those are buying product from market they should bring on this platform so that you know our msme sector especially micro and small sector will get their trades sir we have a lot of you know issues lot of you know uh, uh, suggestion i will share uh, regularly with you but you know today's program is a particularly you know manufacturing sector we know that manufacturing sector sector is struggling we are going to achieve the target but somehow we have we required a more support from you a level playing field importance to create for msme in a ease of doing business 
Therefore, I would like to uh, invite you and welcome you to share our thoughts. Thank you so much. Um, as it, um, uh, Chandrakant uh, Salunke ji, founder and president of Federation of Indian SME Associations. All the esteemed uh, delegates, I can see quite a big number, almost close to 100 are already listening in. Uh, I mean, I'll just be very, very brief because I had indicated I have to go somewhere. Uh, the significance of MSMEs for the Indian economy cannot but be undermined. And uh, today we are meeting uh, the Organization of SME Manufacturing Summit. Uh, I think uh, it's the eve of uh, our MSME Day, the International MSME Day, taking place on 27th. And it's very nice that instead of a day, you are actually organized a week uh, in which I think esteemed delegates are going to discuss uh, all the very finer points. The significance of MSMEs today becomes all the more important to revitalize the sector. The question is not only about why this sector assumes a vital role in the Indian economy's growth trajectory, but also how to ensure that this sector spearheads the recovery today. The theme of today's conference is SME Manufacturing Summit. Undeniably, the contribution of MSMEs to the country's GDP, exports, and employment has been immense. Government of India has taken several measures and launched a number of initiatives, which Salonkeji also talked about in the recent past, to provide an enabling environment for promoting entrepreneurship, inclusive growth, and sustainable development. For MSMEs in particular, initiatives are ranged from facilitating access to credit, to ease of doing business, from owning skills, to ensuring smooth transitions to online activities. I think the most crucial thing today is the recovery of the MSME sector it needs to be put on a fast track. A beginning has already been made to take corrective actions. And I'm quite confident that it's only a matter of time before the results start soon. I can see that extremely important delegates and speakers with wide ranging expertise have already joined the summit. I give my best wishes for a very successful summit. We from the ministry side, assure you that we are completely open to the ideas. Um, we do respect the stakeholders' ideas in forming all policies. Wherever we could intervene, we would always intervene. What from our side, what we want is please be free with us. Please tell us uh, the things. There are many things which experts like you know far better than people like us uh, who might not be having that kind of a knowledge of the ground. Quite obviously, it is the knowledge at the ground level which is the most important in any kind of policy formation. I and my offices, the ministry itself, are always open. Um, I think, uh, like our honorable minister, I mean, I think meets you for long ranging discussions and uh, does take in uh, as his ear clearly to the ground. And uh, we, we all work under his guidance and uh, we'll try our best. Not it's not a question of helping. We understand that your sector is the core and the most crucial to our economy's recovery at any point of time. So always welcome at any point of time. I'll have to leave, but thank you so much and all the best for your uh, summit, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your attention. I will be leaving. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Just last point, I would like to suggest that you know there are plenty of uh, private industrial park made in India particularly on the private uh, power, private land and, you know, the uh, government land. So I would like to suggest you, sir, where we can, you know, uh, think about to recognize them. Mr. Patel, Prakash Patel is having a very good uh, industrial park in Mumbai, Bhumi World Corp, and they are providing support for the more than 2,000 MSMEs. And uh, at least they are, they are providing 30,000 employment. So these kind of, you know, smaller industrial zones are there. I, Other think, added, I think it's uh, a very good idea. Uh, recently, I am aware that last year DPIIT started something about major industrial parks. Yes. There is a method which they have started. Yes, I, th I think this is a wonderful idea. We'll work on huh. it. Absolutely. I will. I will come up. Come back to you with a proper on this discussion. I think it's a very good idea of kind of huh. giving a specific sure. status or a specific quality marking. Yes, it is very important. We do have. Sure, sure. Sure. Thank we will so continue much. our discussion. Thank you, Please, sir. Thank you. Uh, Garg Saab is there, so we will convey Please, all the yeah, information. Garg is the representative of our ministry. I am quite sure yes. all help. Thank you so much. Have a thank you, sir. Day. Thank you for your presence. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Garg Saab, you know, the point is, uh, the Prakash, I will bring Prakash Patelji now. You know, there are plenty of you know, small and medium.
medium uh, industries are there and those have you know, set up through the private industrial park. So Prakash ji, you want to share a few words about uh, Bolia? Chandraganji, thank you very much for getting me in the uh, platform and the SME Chamber of India. I'm very much thankful. And I would like to share, everyone has uh, spoken about technology, finance, uh, the lean manufacturing, e-commerce and the trend which is running right now. I to focus on the uh, site where in India there are lots of SMEs require a place to sustain their industrial units and they want to grow, they require a space in the very much minimum time. Because in, in the pandemic, you have seen lots of uh, mass manufacturing needed the space uh, for uh, in the very shortest time. In India, the trend was uh, before like we have to go and buy land from the government, take plant pass from the government, uh, construct your own factory, take uh, 15, 20 uh, uh, like licenses from the government and then start the unit. It requires three to four years to start his, any manufacturing unit. For, for SME, it is very much difficult to focus on uh, the, the in infrastructure uh, side and he can't uh, do uh, both things together. So my suggestion to government also to SME Chamber of India also, where uh, we need to focus on the ready plug and play unit where anyone can start their manufacturing in, in very shortest time in very cost effective time. Why cost effective? Because in India right now, the 50% of the investment cost is going on land and building for SMEs who are into using 3000 square feet to 10,000 square feet. The people are spending their investment of 50% to 60% on the land and building where their production cost gets higher because of the more investment going towards the land and building. If it can come uh, to 15%, the rest 35% can he can invest in the technology, working capital and expand his business. So I would like to share that if we if the cluster development happens where the cost goes down because it is a 100% occupancy units are there. Lots of ecosystem is running. But if I, I, I am running an industrial park where the are running right and there the people are 50 percent or 60 people are working uh, with themselves where uh, the, the supply chain is already made because somebody is making in if i say example of plastic bottles somebody is making wrapper somebody is making the cap somebody is making the pet somebody is making the machinery for making the blow, blow molding likewise lots of supply chain is around the industrial park where he can get all the pre-production and post-production in the same area where he can save the cost of logistic and he can make the product very cost effective. Now the trend is in if you've if you've seen uh, see about the trend of uh, whole uh, world where uh, uh, lots of people are uh, coming from China, European countries because in India is having high consumption in the manufacturing sector where India is developing. India is because of the population. India is uh, growing in the uh, purchase things and India is growing for the consumption where if we have infrastructure ready in India, likewise, we can be a big player in the world for the manufacturing sector. We are lacking in the infrastructure side for the plug and play unit. If we do that, who, and I request government to focus on the ready plug and play in, uh, infrastructure where we can be benefited. One more yes. Chandraganji I want to share. Uh, that was a thought uh, I have already uh, spoken to Amitabh Khanji when uh, when I met him in the Niti Aayog where uh, we have lots of people have uh, houses with them where he, he if he sell his house of which is uh, the buy it before 20 years he's uh, having capital gain to save capital gain he's investing again to the housing sector. If we allow them, if they he can sell his unit uh, uh, residential flat and uh, invest in the industrial unit where the investment will come into industry. Lots of dead investment is there in India in the housing sector. It can be coming into active investment where uh, people uh, the, where the industry will go. The rural area will be developed where the uh, government will get the lots of you know, taxes from that particular unit. Uh, government will get lots of uh, employment on that rural area. So, and we can have lots of startup people like a person who is having startup idea okay. and he wants to, um, so he wants to start his unit. So he's, he can uh, the, the, uh, take a uh, help of his father and selling his uh, residence flat and Perfect. come into industry. 
he he can be developed and he can be go faster uh, on my suggestion uh, rather you know i'll give one to mr ak panda also during that time how the food processing industry is setting a food park the, the, the model they are using, the similar model if we use for setting up MSME high-tech park or MSME cluster park, that system if we bring in our ministry, I, since you are a part of the you know decision-making uh, segment, I suggest you know throw this idea when you meet minister or because so, uh, so in fact uh, uh, we already have a. I'll just tell you two things that we are doing in this area is one is that the scheme that we call MSC CDP. Hmm. MSC CDP scheme. So this allows uh, uh, help to development of infrastructure even to the private players and uh, funding up to 50% is provided uh -huh. to even private player uh, people who are doing the infrastructure development, industry infrastructure development. This is number one. Number two, the technology centers that we are setting up, they have the facility of plug and play. So what we are trying to say is that all the new MSMEs who want to take up some manufacturing do not need to put up investment for manufacturing unit of the day one. They can just use the large facilities available in these technology centers and can use this facility to get their orders developed. And once they find that they whatever they machine, whatever uh, models they developed and they are sellable in the market, then they can think of setting up some partial facility use again partial facility of these centers and together that's how they can grow this this is what is the concept of technology okay. centers uh, which are already around 18 plus 15 setup and more are going to come up in the in the coming days with the pp model and things like that okay okay thank you uh, now i would like to bring the sachinandra sachindra nath uh, to you know to share his thoughts because we grow together so how the you grow capital is supporting to grow us Thank you, Chandrakanji. Thank you for inviting uh, you know to this uh, this panel. Uh, you know, for benefit of your uh, audience, uh, you know, Ugro is a dedicated SME financing platform in India. This platform was started by me in 2018. Uh, it raised roughly around 1,000 crore of equity capital, with an aspiration to take 1% market share and build India's largest SME financing business. The reason for for setting up this platform came from my little bit of my personal background. Uh, in my 25 years of financial services, uh, diversified financial services experience, and coming from a background of a small town, town, large town uh, uh, of Banaras, working in rural areas, and then uh, dealing with almost all types of financial services, I realized that you know one of the largest need for a country like India is to provide credit to SMEs because uh, our empl the employment, economy, economic growth, all of that is dependent on the small businesses. But there is hardly a focus approach of a large lending institution to be created. And it stemmed from the fact that when it comes to small businesses, small businesses are not like mid corporate or large corporate. Small businesses are small and they, they are very different from each other. I keep giving this example of think of this, uh, think of a dentist and an, uh, and an IVF clinic. In healthcare sector, both are actually small businesses, both are run by doctors, but they are, they are two very different businesses. An IVF clinic may have only five clients in, in a month, but may have a bigger revenue and dentists may have uh, 100 clients in a month, but may have a lesser revenue. But when it comes to the lending, uh, you know, lending institution try looking, giving credit on the basis of one defined method, which is their method. So the effort of, uh, of understanding an underlying business or an SME have been very negligible and that creates a huge amount of problem. Uh, our aspiration was that can we create a platform uh, which deeply specializes in certain select sectors and look at the non-homogeneous nature of these sectors and solve for the credit problem. Uh, we focus on <clears throat> eight defined sectors of, of Indian economy. Uh, micro MSME we treat as one single sector. And then we look at the combination of technology uh, and knowledge, which is our deep specialization. Uh, the reason for that, our view is that given the level of digitization in India stack two, in three years to four years time, you would see the SME financing or the credit dissemination 
to be at the same level what you see in consumer finance. Today, if you walk it into a store and you want to buy a fridge or AC or even a jeans, you can get credit in few minutes of time. This has happened because of the level of data available with respect to of an individual through bureau and all the lenders have a defined way of looking your bureau score and being able to give you the credit. But when it comes to the SME, the method of giving credit is to go meet SME, talk to them, figure out what their revenue is. The challenge have been that, you know, to give a credit to SME in past, you have to first estimate his revenue. You have to estimate his expenses and you have to figure out what would be his estimated cash flow. And none of that being clear, all lenders generally ended up asking for a physical collateral. Apna ghar de do, property de do, industry, you know, how, you know, and, but there is a capacity constraint, you know, how much a small business can give his own property. It's not available, but what you, what is happening now, you know, with the, uh, I know the, for SMEs, GST is a bad word, but if you look at the combination of GST and digitization of banking and what we, <clears throat> and the way the system is getting integrated, whether it's Udyogadha, PAN, uh, income tax return. The digitized economy would allow uh, SMEs to get financing, uh, you know, as quickly, you know, less than an hour or so. Uh, in the last one and a half years, we, you know, in two years, actually, in, during the pandemic, uh, we have been exponentially growing and trying to solve the problem. We look at SMEs from, uh, beside our sectors, we look, we look at SME from our four bucket. We have a large branch-led channel. Now we are expanding our branch-led channel to 250 plus branches, uh, which uh, you know go to the bottom of the pyramid of looking at MSMEs and provide financing. We look at an ecosystem approach, which is a combination of what we call our supply chain financing and productive asset financing, which is machinery. We part third is we partner with all all ecosystems in India. It can be a marketplace, a small NBFC, fintech player, payment platform. Uh, transaction platform and provide financing and fourth is our digital channel and in period of last one and a half two years we have seen you know it is generally presumed that the nbfcs generally have lesser liquidity they don't have capital but given our size of capital and quality of governance today uh, we have almost 39 plus lenders on our platform uh, we are we have significant amount of liquidity two of the india's largest lender both state bank of india and bank of baroda are co-lenders on our platform and, you know, we lend uh, to all segment of the SAP. I'll, I'll give you this example. We, you know, I mean, I know uh, we have representation from Ministry of MSME uh, on the GEM platform. Uh, when the financing platform for GEM was, was being designed, we actually created along with I Spirited, we created the entire GEM financing platform. What we realized is that to lend to an MSME, you have to have a very different approach. Think of this way that on Indian rail, if an Indian railway is giving an order of buying stationery to a small SME, the order can be as low as of a 1 lakh rupee value. The SME need money to buy stationery from the market and supply to Indian railways. Uh, but he has nothing else except the order of Indian railways. The way GEM solves, you know, because earlier the problem was that he will supply the material to Indian railways, money would come after 1 year or 6 months, 7 months. But on a gem platform, because the 80% of the invoice value, uh, purchase order value goes in an escrow, as soon as he supplies the order, the money would go back to the SME. But still the problem is that how do you, how, how a lender can lend at the point of giving the order by Indian Railways itself. When we looked at the gem Sahai, look at their rating platform, we realized that actually if an SME who has supplied material to the same Indian railways for last five times, there is no reason why on the sixth time, when he will borrow from a lender, he would default. So you, we use the rich data analytics of his historical track record of supplying to the Indian railways. We combine that with his GST data and banking data. And today, actually in the pilot, in 30 seconds, we are in discounting the invoices on Gem Sahai platform. And this is just one example. Uh, I can assure you that lending institutions, which has deep focus on building specialization, technology, and building vast reach, would be able to solve the problem of credit for SME. I have no doubt in my mind that India cannot succeed unless the credit enablement for MSME is not done. We are at a time and place 
wherein both the government, the ministry, the technological ecosystem, and the desire to provide credit to MSME is there. It is the just one more step is required is what I call is belief in the potential of these small businesses. Look beyond the obvious. Look beyond their you know past income tax return balance sheet. I use very defined data. Look at their turnover data through GST. Look at their banking data through uh, you know when account aggregation comes, and you know apply an industry margin, and you will be able to provide the financing. Uh, and that is the way in last, you know, uh, one year uh, during the pandemic, we have disbursed almost 1000 crore of loans for MSME. Uh, as soon as the market is open again, we are aggressively building our you know, outreach program. We created a program in Sanjeevni called Sanjeevni, which was during the pandemic, wherein we say it's like a Sanjeevni. If you need money at this point of time, we, because of our sector specialization, we'll be able to estimate that once pandemic would be over, in what period of time you will be able to come back to the normalcy and basically just provide the credit. So I think so. All lending institutions at this point of time are doing their bit. Uh, what is needed for SMEs and the SMEs who are uh, present today is what I call awareness. The historical view of small businesses that they should not share information because sharing information with credit institution may land up in trouble. Because somebody may come, so if you share your financial uh, income tax department would come or something would happen. I think so one, you know, you have one SMEs have to be digitally aware. They should be more open of sharing their data and believe that having more credit to do more business is far more beneficial than trying to save the tax. Uh, and that's I think so once that that culture would come in. Uh, you know, there is no looking back back in terms of I know the gap in India is roughly around 300 to 450 billion dollars. I think so it will take 15 to 20 years to fill that gap, but a large portion of gap in the next three to five years can still be filled. Uh, you know, SMEs can propel our GDP growth by another 300 basis point very easily in next three years is my firm belief. Thank you very much, uh, Natsab. You had given very good, uh, you know, uh, speech and particularly the uh, way the way you have uh, put forward about you know thinking about SME sector, a serious thinking about SME sector to understand their requirements, to understand their issues and problems, to understand the hurdles. Rather, you know, this is, I will be very happy to you know take more uh, suggestion from you because I am the uh, putting a lot of efforts, a lot of you know pressure to the bankers to how they can support the MSMEs and to fulfill the target which is given by the government and RBI to fulfill the uh, enhancement of the you know lending towards MSME sector. I'll definitely uh, we can discuss offline and on this matter. But thank you very much, friends. For today's event, uh, rather you know we are organizing a week program. And uh, today's event uh, was supported by and sponsored by Parmenta Biotech Limited, Canada Bank, Instant Bank, JSW, uh, Ugro Capital, LIC. Uh, the industrial park uh, partner is a Bumiwal, and we have a logistic partner as a TCI Express. When we talk about technology, we talk about the finance, we talk about the, the different segment. So we need a, some, you know, logistic partner. Also, we have to you know, create the very systematically the you know, level playing field for logistic system also, logistic sector also. So I invite uh, uh, Sri Chandan Agrawalji, uh, Managing Director TCI Express Limited to how to, you know, to give a uh, insight on the uh, logistic for MSMEs and particularly for the, you know, systematically how they can utilize and how they can you know, grow more by using your services. Right. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Sangeji. Uh, thank you. I would first likely uh, like to welcome the honest, honor minister, honorable minister, Mr. B. B. Swain, uh, secretary of MSME uh, Government of India, Mr. Chandrakant Salung, uh, founder and president, Federation of Indian SME Association and SME Chamber of India, and other distinguished dignitaries and friends. So I just start by. You know, already we know about the MSME sector, but uh, for a uh, logistics point of view, uh, you know, I want to just start by saying that uh, it is at the, you know, one of the most important pillars of the Indian economy as it is contributing greatly uh, and immensely to the growth. Uh, for example, the number of MSE, MSME in India has 
increased by a CAGR of 18.5% from 2019 to 2020. The sector gives employment to about 70 million and contributes about 45% to manufacturing output and 40% of exports. So this is a substantial uh, number we are seeing here. And the government initiative has encouraged young women and new entrepreneurs to take up the business. Uh, the MSME uh, sector has set a, a target of the proposed national manufacturing policy of raising the share of the manufacturing sector in GDP from 16% at present to 25% by the year end of 2022. The MSME sector is extremely crucial in addressing the national objectives of bridging the rural urban drive. Growth of SM, MSME in India is due to the impetus on the part of the government initiative as Make in India. The government of India has introduced several major policy initiatives for the support and promotion of micro, small and medium enterprises in, in the country. In the 2021 budget, government announced funds worth 10,000 crore, we all know that, for guarantee emergency credit line facility for the MSME borrowers, giving this sector a much needed boost. Budget allocation in financial 22 more than doubled to 15 and a half thousand crores. MSME sector in India has been performing appreciately better than the overall rate of GDP, average 8% growth per annum, and overall industrial output measured by the IIP. But now we know that because of the COVID-19 pandemic, it has been impacted also. So, you know, uh, TCI Express, uh, the way we support MSME is something that uh, companies, MSME companies, uh, the, their owners, their proprietors, they need a sound logistic solution also. And they know they want to be assured that their goods are moving on time, you know, from there uh, uh, to the OEM or to the manufacturer. And in case there is any loss on the way, that the uh, MSME is compensated. So TC Express, uh, we have been in the business for the last 65 years. And we have actually grown from the MSME uh, segment only. It is a, the later on when we had the large corporations come into the fold. So in, in the group, we have about 1500 offices, branch offices, which caters primarily to the MSME sector. Now, I think, now, but in the next five years, this will become 2,500. So this idea is that we bring it closer to the MSME, the transportation network, and the his logistics cost overall comes down drastically. Now, today he has to go uh, very far long distances or maybe uh, since logistics industry is so unorganized, you know, 95% is unorganized. He always has a fear that, how can, you know, my material be safe? How can my money be safe? So as a logistics company, we ensure, we give that assurity, that trust. Uh, and we've been giving that for so many years to now millions of customers. In case there is a problem uh, from our side, there's a damage. We always, uh, uh, you know, make sure that the MSME is compensated. So unfortunately, what has happened in the past is that uh, everybody catered to, you know, the large corporations only. Nobody thought of the MSMEs that they would need a solid uh, uh, logistics uh, network uh, also, and they would require services which are, you know, visually available. They can track their goods and, you know, how it's moving. And they have a, a means to a, a company where the customer service is also very strong. So all these things were essentially missing because of, you know, the high unorganized segment in the logistics sector. So TCI Express has been focusing very strongly uh, on the MSME segment. We have now created about uh, uh, 40,000 pickup and drop locations across the country through our branch network. And of course, IT is a forefront uh, for, you know, tracking the material and assuring that their material is safe. So uh, this is something, you know, uh, historically we have been known for all these years that uh, an MSME or a large corporation 
can consider logistics to be a uh, uh, not a challenging aspect of their business but a uh, helping like more of a uh, sync partner in getting their goods to the customer or to the manufacturer so with that i will not take much time and uh, i would like to uh, thank you uh, for inviting me and uh, for my uh, speech thank you thank you very much uh, chandar ji you know i would like to understand from you uh, what are the you know uh, the lacking you found in particularly while dealing with the sme sector and logistic point of view and most of the time wherever we listen to them there is logistic problem there is not a, having the proper transportation and that's why my product is delayed maybe uh, maybe true or uh, false but you know somehow what is a lacking so that i don't know we can encourage sme we can share their information to amongst them particularly for utilizing the tci services so you know the most important thing is that uh, today uh, now there is when he, when the msme goes to the unorganized segment transport company they go there for low pricing first of all india we have to first they look at the pricing low pricing that means they are chalega but fact of the matter is that that low pricing uh, company or that unorganized guy will not have the paperwork will not have the the it network will not have the customer support will not have a billing department so they are again facing a lot of challenge uh, not okay. i'm not saying that we are uh, expensive but the fact that the msme segment is not aware that such a large unorganized segment remains you know and is is actually part of the uh, uh, the uh, supply chain of india the reason okay. why our cost is so high our logistics cost is so high about 15% is because of this uh, you know the unorganized segment but do you have any uh, suggestion or uh, any question to suggest to mr gar for uh, particularly to take up the, you know uh, the government level and not only the ministry uh, msme uh, ministry but you know they can t- t- discuss with the transport ministry or other other ministry which is providing by infrastructure development so infrastructure yes okay. you can speak uh, so basically speak. Uh, the 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 issue has been very well uh, handled by the central government by introducing the gst that was the main uh, you know uh, impetus for uh, dissolving the unorganized segment and uh, bringing out that you know uh, visibility to the organized segment now uh, everything is being done uh, you know in the in the good lapse of judgment by the current government and when they also want to improvise on the gst unfortunately the time has not come because you know gst was launched in 2017 then we had floods then we had pseudo wars and now we have the disease you have the covid so all and then of course you have the political you know the 370 and all of that so the 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 real gst you know uh, aspiration for india has not emerged which has benefited which should have benefited the sme now this uh, you know going forward the government has already recognized and they are uh, you know uh, 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 working hand in hand uh, uh, with the seg- sector but the government should also teach them that or explain them that that they should not go with unorganized uh, logistics companies because they will evade some sort of a you know eway bill or a gst which will the 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 result will come on the msme they will have to pay the fine because their goods are moving on the trucks so all just a basic knowledge you know is important is required to be given out okay thank you uh, alok ji see usually when we uh, you know suggest or you know encourage msme sector particularly for you know utilizing the trade finance particularly you know to use the bill discounting system which is earlier used to use now what are the you know suggestions particularly you know the enhancing the facility financial trade facility among msme sector particularly for local and uh, export market how you can support because most of the msmes whenever we say they go for trade finance they say it is difficult to take so see uh, <coughs> chandigan ji see one is of course the traditional way of financing okay wherein we we assess the 
uh, balance sheet profitability and the business of the of the of the prospective borrower and of course uh, we, we we also take collaterals okay. for the smaller guys i'm saying so that's a, that, that's one way of uh, uh, and that be, and that's very routine i mean of course yeah now of course uh, uh, as i mentioned that uh, uh, supply chain is finance is one way of uh, again financing uh, the, the the domestic trade uh, uh, thing, uh, transactions uh, buyers and, and 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 suppliers so you know, there we can uh, i mean fund to them so what they can do is suppose suppose uh, abc enterprises i'll take this uh, thing uh, is supplying to let's say maruti only okay now they want finance so they can come to us okay and uh, they can they can they can direct us to uh, to maruti okay if they can arrange for that one letter from maruti that yes uh, confirming to us that uh, you 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 give uh, funding to to uh, abc basis uh, our acceptance of invoice okay and uh, that uh, they will make the payment to us we can we can give funding to that abc enterprises at uh, as i mentioned uh, very very uh, simple terms and uh, and without collaterals or without any security uh, so that's another way of and third way is now i mean see as you are aware that you know, this uh, government of india has uh, has come out with this trades platform okay now <clears throat> almost all the banks have also tied up and let's say they are also starting uh, transacting uh, through through trades okay so if they can ask maruti itself okay to 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 you know, tie up with any of these banks under trades Okay, and and then of course it's even easier because in in trades everything moves electronically and the whole process is, I mean, is even more simpler and and the 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 financing cost is even more cheaper. So they can approach Maruti or whichever whichever corporates that they are supplying to 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 register themselves in 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 the trade through any of their banks. Mr. Patel, when you have already approached state governments. Particularly to setting yes, up uh, industrial park. Uh, what is your plans for uh, providing yes, the you know industrial park facility? As a uh, uh, Sigar sir mentioned about you know what is a, a scheme is available from the government point of India. So how you are putting efforts for particular setting up? Rather you are now setting up one industrial park in uh, Hyderabad. You are planning in uh, Gujarat. So what is your you know uh, suggestion to the industry and particular government? Yes, sir. So basically, first from government and start your own uh, constructing your unit unit and then uh, start your unit. It takes lots of time. So we uh, make sure that uh, the projects we are coming up with the government, we are making whole as a uh, all operational units. Like when you see lots of industrial park is having only occupancy of 20 percent, 30 percent, 10 percent. That ecosystem is not working properly. If we say uh, a, like an industrial park of a thousand acre of any state, in that only 50 or 100 acre is operational. The rest all you know, the, uh, land is vacant and not in a use. So we uh, ask government, lots of state government to occupy that unit by making plug and play units. Okay. So the government was agreed to, yeah. So the cost of units are maybe mostly very much cheaper than the unit uh, which is into the cities. So to decongest any city, it requires a uh, infrastructure should be ready in one hour time of that particular city, like Hyderabad, like Bombay, like like Pune. So there are lots of uh, cities need to be decongest because there are uh, like in Bombay. If you say example, three like fifty thousand units are operating in in Mumbai city, which is like forty percent of the traffic is because of them. If and they are using uh, the space which is costing around 50,000 rupees a square feet to 80,000 rupees a square feet, which is affecting to the production cost. If we if that particular unit goes to outside the Bombay, it the cost will be only 2,000 to 3,000 rupees a square feet. Means the the money which is saved by selling his unit from Bombay and going to uh, the one hour uh, the far to Bombay. He will save lots of money and he can invest that money to the technology to for the for further more. My production question to you, Mr. Speed. Patel, is this. Patel, sir, I want to ask you, like, uh, yes. I was talking that people should now try to move to uh, semi-urban and rural areas. So what do you want? Right. What facilities the industry want for them to shift to right. these 
semi urban areas or rural areas so basically uh, already uh, our honorable pm has announced the pradhan mantri awas yojana so which is already in the rural area only where mm -hmm. the people working uh, they can stay there and if the, the government provides us the land for the making mm -hmm. plug and play industrial unit we can make the industrial parks which is around the cities which is one or one and a half hour the far from the city where mm -hmm. the ecosystem can be developed and the, we need the only uh, the basically land which is uh, vacant from uh, uh, with the government of that particular state that can be utilized in to making the plug and play units and that can be like if i say example of 100 acre uh, in in our 100 acre we have set up 1500 factory which is having 42000 employment created with the investment of 4000 crore rupees where the gst and everything is collecting around around 800 to 900 uh, crore rupees is uh, generating the taxes from that particular industrial park mm -hmm. so there are lots of if, if if i give you example let uh, let's see uh, a german guy wants to start his uh, sme unit in india so he he can't go to uh, government uh, the, the department and ask for the land he make his own factory and start uh, take all the permission from the government it will be very much difficult to for yes. him to start any unit if he yeah. has a ready unit where he can take uh, bring the machinery machinery technology and so the finance the, and he can start the, the park uh, that you talk of, yeah, the size of the park you're talking about what kind of investment is required in that sir 100 acre uh, the land the construction cost is around uh, 1200 to 1500 to be the square feet with the infrastructure so we are selling now unit of uh, around 2200 rupees to 2500 rupees a square feet which is ready plug in no, no, play my unit my simple question is that uh, with, for developing a park of let's say 100 acres how much money acre. is required how much money is required so basically yeah, yeah basically our model is uh, we make the industrial units and sell it to the end user where investment of a particular 100 acre the construction cost is only 500 crore rupees Mm -hmm. which is buyed from for the sme where mm -hmm. uh, the, uh like uh, the thousand unit uh, each unit guy will buy a unit from us and he can uh, the start is management where he can get avail the loan facility from the bank so the mm -hmm. investment is from my side or from the uh, the, the unit holder side it will be very much less because bank are going to fund to that industry unit holder okay. sir here i know garksa i will give you one where, where my, my experience uh, mm. Garsa, my experience I'll give you, I have visited more than at least uh, uh, 50 to 55 industrial park in the world, which is, you know, uh -huh. uh, forget China, China is far ahead, but I have visited Japan, I visited Poland, Romania, Bulgaria, even USA in many places, even Saudi Arabia also, but what I observed, you know, setting up industrial park, you know, not only they are uh, developing the commercial or real estate, yes. what mm. they have done, uh, technology park inside technology yes. smaller park where you know innovation invention support can be provided research and yes. development segment is provided community hall is there particularly you know the event event uh, purpose the, the big hall is also created for them education mm -hmm. level program and they have also created display center the display mm -hmm. center the companies those are manufacturing products so i don't want to go all 500 companies to visit all the product and their brochure as well as the, 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 they have mentioned the you know, presentation on the you know digital way what yeah. company is doing so mm -hmm. i will give you one example in the singapore government and the chinese government near suzhou which is i visited uh, 2006 that uh, the, the industrial park which the way they are developed mm -hmm. but the, the, the point is you know they are providing the all support to the small entrepreneur the manufacturing industry they don't want to go out even they are bringing unskilled labor and making a skilled labor rather they are providing the support there to giving a education training or rather you know the uh, particularly the operational system is providing they are uh, they are inviting the senior staff to give the advice and, and they certify that this person is eligible or capable to work on this project they give education training program mm -hmm. but technical skill how they can enhance so when he was just an operator now he can go for a further operating so this mm -hmm. is the way 
so my suggestion will be you know i will bring out with a some very good proposal because i have a two ja japanese very uh, uh, very high profile peer companies they are looking for setting up industrial park in various places so i will come back to you and the secretary that you know, how we can do and here is my suggestion uh, how we can recognize private industry park because private industry park don't want you know funding money from the government but they want recognize for what purpose they can get the electricity on time they can yes. get roads and uh, surrounding places the you know the uh, uh, water supply because in mumbai mm -hmm. nearby mumbai i will give you one example when the during the may time if there is a uh, water scarcity of the scarcity for the uh, drinking water they stop supply to water for the pharma industry chemical industry and food sector so where they will mm -hmm. go so these mm -hmm. are the many issues are there so supplying providing value addition and instant services to the industry i'm sure the smb sector will definitely grow yeah mr mm -hmm. okay. patel yeah garg sir yeah uh, basically in our industrial park there are 20 categories of products which are manufactured printing plastic engineering ready made garment food pharma real gold jewelry silver jewelry uh, furniture furnishing toys manufacturing uh hmm. the eyes man uh, eye eyewear manufacturing watch manufacturing almost all the products are manufactured there this why they are into the same place because they are getting the ecosystem there if if you if say example of watch manufacturing se uh, sector he is having packaging unit beside him he is having plastic packaging unit beside him he is having printing uh, packaging unit beside him so he is having all the ecosystem to sustain the cost of that particular product now we are not only selling the industrial unit we have uh, so after giving the space we give them the layouting of the unit we give we give the we sell their products to the e-commerce platform we export their products we we make sure that he has a 100% efficient uh, production capacity he can reach there we train their laborers we give them laborers the, have all the possibility things uh, for the sme sector they are they should be focused on the uh, innovation and the manufacturing sector rest we so, are getting are you also introducing the lean manufacturing him. systems for them also are you also exposing yes, them already the already already yes okay through chamber we yes, are so we have uh, uh, when you technology see technology development council through right. that you know virenji and we have put our efforts rather you know i am integrating the lot of engineers those are working in a high company big big companies to provide a value addition you know innovation invention and mostly sir what is the point you know innovation invention is right but you know how you can do commercialization yeah that is our main point so alok ji do you have any question uh to mr garg so and also yes, that uh, uh, please please look at the <coughs> the urc uh, process yeah, as well as i mean if traders can also be uh, included in the in the msme definition okay sure sure so friends you know the uh, the uh, we have to put more efforts to empower manufacturing industry because we have to make india as a manufacturing hub and therefore minister of msm minister of commerce industry and other ministries are playing very important role and, uh, and the government official like uh, you know mr bb say and our gurg sahab are taking keen interest not only just you know to understand but uh, taking keen interest to resolve and revive and particularly how you can survive and perform better whatever the, the expectation or whatever the you now targeted growth we have Uh, projected for the last uh, last year this year and coming here also so friends you know uh, to uh, you know enjoying or you know, organizing and you know uh, uh, providing the support and the you know, platform to all the msme sector particularly not only just for a uh, one 364 days but we work on a 365 days particularly on the providing the support services to msme sector not only organizing one day event that is you know a semi day to be celebrated but we have started week but we are working 365 days for a particular sir so i am thankful to gurg sir for spending two and a half hours with us and uh, i'm very much happy that you know you have taken keen interest and uh, gurg sir uh, uh, the swen sir also show, uh, shown very much into much interest for uh, uh, you know resolving and you know securing the interest of the msme sector for particularly better business growth friends uh, thank you very much for uh, joining today a uh, special thanks to the you know uh, ferment biotech canra bank uh, indusind bank uh, tci uh, lic bhumi world and mostly you know the particularly how we can you know uh, support 
uh, the MSME sector there, you know, the MSME sector is facing problem for the various uh, issues nowadays, but we'll bring all the issues to the ministry and I, I'm sure that I'm confident that uh, all the issues will be resolved and will be given handholding and support for the MSME sector for better business growth and expansion. With this words, I'm thankful to JSW also for joining us today's program. Uh, I'm very much thankful to the U uh, Grow and special thanks to the all the participants and the delegate join here and special thanks to Minister of MSME for taking care of our MSME sector. Thank you and all the best. Look forward to next program. Thank you very much.